been at start or at work of some project and even continue participating at the project later, but still we're struggling about getting new contributors and even more even users for the project. Okay. Is there anybody who didn't have such a problem? You are not coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this, this is a typical problem uh, that uh, many projects that are starting have. And uh, I have been at the first of uh, many different uh, things uh, during my career and outside of my career. And I've been struggling uh, with the same thing as well. So basically, having any people to learn about the project, to get the new contributors, and in the worst cases, to even get any people to use the thing be the tool, uh, be the different project, be something completely that is not technical. <coughs> uh, I believe you are here to listen uh, for some sort of best practices or you are expecting me perhaps to give you a nice to-do list of things which once you do, you will ultimately and very quickly get a lot of people to start participating in your project. So if you are here for this reason, I will probably disappoint you because I personally think, and from my experience I can tell you that there is nothing like an ultimate source of truth uh, when it comes to getting more people involved in your thing. So what I would like to talk about is uh, what works for me and what might possibly work for you. Uh, because I think uh, it's quite the opposite. The way, is usually, uh, the way to getting more people is usually quite difficult and it's usually a long run. For example, from uh, the recent past, uh, we've been working on a project uh, that uh, we were started, starting in the company uh, about a year ago. Uh, it was uh, basically a tooling uh, for automating uh, container delivery. And although at the beginning uh, it seemed like something super exciting, something that didn't exist uh, in, within our company, and we knew that we would have a huge user base, so that there would be a huge demand for it. And also in the beginning there were many people who wanted to uh, use it, who were exciting uh, into getting involved in that. Even after several months in, we still had just a handful of people who would try it, test it, use it, but not really contribute. And even those who were excited at the very beginning would just stand somewhere behind and maybe more watch it rather than being proactive and uh, contribute actively. <coughs> So that was uh, just uh, one way of it, uh, how I, you know, discovered that uh, this is probably not going uh, to go that easy as I thought. And uh, right now, finally, the project started uh, to ramp up, but uh, still, it's uh, almost a year gone, and uh, the expectations really didn't go that way as uh, we were expecting at the beginning. So, yeah. how do you continue to explain the same project? Uh, how we continue just to find it. Yeah. So, so uh, basically, so since we are doing automation uh, and we know that uh, the processes, uh, some of the processes that uh, people are using uh, for delivering the, their containers are fully manual and uh, the, the biggest justification is the savings in time. And actually, uh, we are implementing uh, the, tool, the tooling into into the real world uh, so that people can uh, see the benefits real time. So that, that's also a way how uh, we are slowly wrapping it up right now, mm -hmm. since we have the core <coughs> pretty much finished. All right, so why should anybody care about the contributors? I believe uh, that there are many of, uh, many of you in here who have begun some of their projects uh, on their own, uh, some tools, for example, some utilities. But they just don't care about anybody else using. Uh, it's just something for their own use or something that uh, they like to develop in their free time and don't really care about anybody uh, you know, looking at that or finding it uh, amongst uh, a lot of other tools on the internet. Uh, that's okay, but uh, on the other hand, there are people who want to, uh, their project to, be, uh, to become known because they know that it will ultimately bring them the value or that it's something that, is, uh, that doesn't really exist anywhere else. So what are the reasons uh, why somebody should care about uh, external people finding their project? Uh, there is a number of things, and I would say that uh, all of them are very much interconnected. Inviting uh, more people 
to participate is uh, basically fostering uh, a diversity in uh, thinking. It is bringing people with different opinions, different values. Uh, people with different backgrounds can uh, bring you different ideas and uh, points of view at the uh, problems you might have. I might be bringing uh, new ideas so when it comes to implementing new features or approaches to, uh, to problems. Uh, that, is very, that is very much uh, interconnected also with the health of uh, the project. Because although you are a senior principal engineer with 20 years of back background, it doesn't mean that you know the answer for everything. And I would say that people tend to live uh, in sort of a small box, and even if you think that you are thinking out of the box, uh, there still will be many articles uh, who will come and uh, let you think differently about issues. <coughs> Longevity uh, is another one. Uh, it's uh, related, I would say it's uh, related uh, very much uh, to keeping the project alive in terms of when you basically either don't have any more time or it happens to us uh, throughout the life that we are going to different stages. So it might also very well happen that you wake up one day and you no longer want to be a developer, you want to become a farmer and don't care about code anymore. So it is nice, nice to have somebody uh, in, in the team uh, have a community created around your project so that they can take over or just step in and substitute you when you don't have time anymore. And <coughs> let me tell you a secret. Uh, that's uh, the th two things that are uh, that I start there, uh, and uh, which people don't tend to talk about. But uh, you know, me as a manager, I also always think in terms of how can I maybe outsource uh, some of the work somewhere else, and potentially how can I end up hiring those people to my team uh, in the company. Uh, but those definitely shouldn't be the main reasons why uh, you are trying to uh, let the world know about your thing. When I was thinking. <coughs> About okay, so that that was uh, that was the result. <coughs> but how do we get there? When I was thinking about uh, uh, this presentation, uh, I ended up pretty much with two ways how you can get uh, to in invite more people and uh, attract more people to participate uh, in your in your project. And that would be bringing the value, which should always be there. But uh, unless you have something which really nobody has come up with yet, uh, and you know, just bringing the value would uh, ensure that uh, the eternal success for the project, you have to make the project visible. There is a separate talk on how to make your project valuable and beneficial to others, so I'm not going to focus on that one, that one in this presentation. Rather than that, I would like to talk more about how to make the project visible. <coughs> Again, I would say there are two ways. You just have to market the hell out of the project, either by doing online marketing or offline marketing, so the old school way of talking to people. Online marketing might seem quite easy because you know there is the advantage of having the internet at hand, but on the other hand, the internet has grown a little bit over the last decades, uh, so you have to put a lot of effort into not getting lost uh, within the wide waters of internet. The two simplest things and things that you can very easily take advantage of are social networks and blog posts. Uh, social networks, you know, which I'm probably talking about, uh, the most favorite, uh, like Facebook or Twitter. It's very simple to enter an existing group, a uh, group that has a similar focus uh, or is uh, revolving around uh, some area where your project would be relevant or be the technology area, uh, be it, <coughs> uh, be it uh, uh, language uh, in which your uh, project is written in. Uh, you can communicate with people who are in the group, you can help those people who are there, you can just ask for advice, you can ask about feedback on your tooling and people will likely help and can uh, give you their opinion. Uh, if not that, you can always create your own group, you can have a page for the project, you can make it well known this way. And I would say, don't be afraid to go big. Social networks are there. Uh, as I said, many people, uh, the, the words of the internet are big, so as much as you can do, uh, go ahead and don't be afraid. 
uh, about going to uh, figure. The other easy thing are, is simply writing articles about uh, your project. Uh, if you don't have any ideas, uh, have a look at the other similar things or other similar <coughs> contributors and have a look at uh, what they are writing. Uh, you can start with your personal blogs or you can write to bigger platforms like open source, uh, .com or uh, other community related like Federal Magazine or even use a uh, big platform like medium.com uh, to promote uh, your thing uh, much wider. Uh, if, <clears throat> if you are not sure about uh, the big platform or just want to start smaller or maybe, uh, maybe aim at a target more targeted audience, you can always uh, have a look around uh, around you and see what works uh, around your local community, uh, be it your city or the whole country. For example, in the Czech Republic, we have a nice portal, root.cz, which is a portal that is basically focusing the uh, whole IT area, or again, Moje Fedora CZ, which is revolving around the Fedora project. And these are <coughs> platforms who are always looking for new contributors, for more articles. So go ahead, uh, do the research and take advantage of those. It's uh, the easiest uh, you can do. And these big platforms will very likely do the traction that you are looking for and will invite uh, much more people to learn about it. On the other way, <coughs> on the other hand, there is the old school way of reaching out to people uh, face to face. How you can do it? Again, uh, first thing that you can do is having a look around you. Uh, look for things like DEFCON, for example, if you are living in Bordeaux. Uh, there is plenty of opportunities, but not just big conferences. If you are not comfortable speaking in front of uh, big audiences, you can start smaller. You can uh, look for local meetups, uh, local workshops, or just meetings of uh, people who are interested in a similar thing as you are. Uh, when it comes to meetups, you don't even have to attend the meetups that already exist, but you can think of creating your own because there are usual, there's usually a need for people to meet and talk about a specific technology, but there is nobody who would take care of that and who would be organizing it for them. So it might also be a, a good way how to leverage this for your project. Um, you all know how uh, the influencers uh, work uh, on the internet, and it's very same also in the IT world. If you have somebody who can just mention your project, uh, take Dan Walsh for example, if, if, you, if he mentions your new container related tool, it will probably get a lot of people interested in at least learning what it is about and uh, how they can take advantage of it. So if you have somebody in your friend circle or the circle of your contacts, uh, ask them if they can mention it in one of their talks or mention it as part of uh, one of the articles they are writing. And one thing uh, that uh, turned out to be quite beneficial for me uh, was also participation in uh, community events. Uh, be it, uh, as I said, meetups, or be it other events like Google Summer of Code. Uh, for example, uh, for our project, uh, the, the automation tooling that we are doing, we have been collaborating uh, with students uh, during the summer, Google Summer of Code, and in the end, we even ended up hiring uh, one of them. So not only we sort of expanded the base of the users and people who were would be contributing to the project, uh, but also well, there was a benefit for, for the for the for the work afterwards. So that will be for the promotion. Uh, but how can you make the people actually feel like they want to contribute to the project? Uh, so except the, that thing of bringing value uh, to your uh, with with uh, introducing your project, uh, you should also think how you can make it easier for people to contribute. So, um, also think about people who are not, not technical. How can you get those involved? Not just people who can contribute with the code, but people who can contribute with documentation, uh, with graphics. <coughs> uh, maybe you might want to translate the project at some point. So think about how you can get people uh, involved who speak different languages and can participate and localize it. And most of all, you should always provide clear information about the project. And this is something where you can also get people who like to document things. <coughs> the project should at least have a README file and not just a README file that says DVD or something like that, but uh, 
uh, buttonize really by saying what you are trying to bring to the audience or the potential users, why should they use it, and how should they use the thing, and maybe how they can uh, contact you. Uh, <coughs> that's one of the things. Uh, you should also have additional information on uh, licensing, uh, contribu contributing guidelines, how people can contribute code, what are uh, the things that you are expecting from them when uh, they are filing an issue. Well, for this, you can take advantage of uh, creating th templates on GitHub or uh, GitLab, there is the option. So that, that's also a way how you can make it much easier for you afterwards. <coughs> And part of collaborating with people is communication, uh, which will be there uh, whether you want to or not. So make it easy for people to reach out to you. Make it easy to reach out to, uh, via email or for IRC. Again, take advantage of the existing uh, communities and their channels, or just create your channel. And then you can take advantage of uh, plenty of other tools like Slack, Twitter, messages, Telegram, and so on. And uh, most important of all, even though if you have all of these means, make sure that you are responsive, that the people know that they are, that you are still there, that the project is alive. Because uh, when somebody contacts you and you just don't respond for a week, what would you think in that case? Is the thing still alive? Do they care about my opinion? Do they want my feedback? Do they want anybody from outside to come in? So make sure that you let them know. And you don't have to write anything all over it. Like, I understand everybody uh, comes to the point where they don't have time for dealing with uh, messages of, with, from outsiders, but you can always set up an auto reply, for example. And communication is related to feedback, uh, which should be uh, pretty natural uh, when it comes to in opening the project up to the world and to other people. So not only you give uh, the contributors' feedback, uh, which, should, by the way, should be constructive and should not be full of hate and just bashing the person uh, in that extent that they won't return anymore. Uh, but let be, be grateful for, for their contribution and give them examples how they can improve it, how they, how they can make the work better in the future. And on the other way, accept feedback. And not just accept it and just forget about it, but try to do something about it. Think about what the person told you and whether that's something that you can act upon. And, and in the end, you should care about fostering the teamwork. Because ultimately, if you are opening your project to the outside world and inviting people to contribute, you are building a team. So make sure that the people who come to your project and want to contribute will feel welcome. Say thank you when they uh, come up with ideas, even though those ideas might not be great, because you always have to count that there might be people, as I said, with different backgrounds, or young people who are just starting. And one thing that happens quite often uh, to me, me as a uh, Slovak, uh, we tend to speak with Czechs in our own language, even when there are people present uh, who don't speak those languages. So be careful and think about this every time you're speaking uh, with people from the same country and think that the English is really the standard language, so use it if possible. And as I said, be welcome, be, be thankful. There's just a few communities where the community owner or the project owner is a total asshole and, <laughs> and for some reason people tend to return to those communities but it's mostly because uh, they're bringing such a huge value that uh, uh, there is no other way uh, but don't do this so that's it and i just ran out of time so thank you and if you have any questions so uh, go ahead i think we still have five minutes perfect uh, or feel free to reach out to me after the talk or via the internet. Can you give an example of how you work your project? So I would say all of the things. Example, not the Example. Did you create a community? Did you make a forum? Yeah, so 
our project, uh, uh, everything like all the source, uh, sources of Xcos code is uh, upstream, uh, so it's available for anybody to look at. Uh, so that's uh, how we could also show it uh, to the world and how we adver uh, how we advertised it. Uh, so basically, uh, there are meetups uh, in Brno uh, that are controller related. So we had a bunch of presentations in there. We have been writing articles uh, at the developer portal uh, that runs the Pirate Head. We wrote an article. We wrote some articles for OpenSource.com. Uh, we are participating at events like this, so having those and basically talking about the stuff. So. Okay. Uh, how did my so I would say it's a combination of uh, being able to justify the value that you're bringing, that really the time that you are spending into the project will pay off. I don't know what exactly we are expecting. It, it would be by a set of meetings with the with the my manager and so maybe uh, other upper managers and then those managers For like sponsors or C level or tech level who are really uh, seeing your project for me in the moment and they say yes this project is fine. interacted directly with the executives uh, and I don't really think they care because uh, the automation that we are doing is uh, mostly for the developers. So I would say that it stays somewhere among the line managers or maybe uh, one step higher but it doesn't really go like to the huge executive. Thank you.